Hi, welcome to Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum for another Lunchtime Learning. I'm Deb Brantanen, and today I'm going to demonstrate how you can make a basket out of natural materials, like this right here. So this basket started out as a pile of stuff like this. Um, specifically, it started out as um, English ivy vines, and these are wild grape vines. So I'm going to take a minute and talk about the preparation of materials a little bit because the preparation of materials actually takes longer than the weaving of the basket itself. So um, English ivy is just one type of vine that works really well as weavers in a basket. And English ivy is actually an invasive. So anytime that you can pull up English ivy out of the woods, your backyard, or any area like that, you're actually doing the um, environment a favor. But anyway, so you're gonna pull up as much English ivy as you need. And then the other thing that I use, and I use this primarily for the rim and the hoop, is wild grapevine. So this is kind of large. You probably wanna cut something that's a little bit smaller, but these are the only two materials that I use in this basket. So part of the prep of this is, your um, English ivy, what you want to do is you actually want to strip the leaves off the vine. And then what we're going to do with it is we're going to boil it. So strip off anything that's uh, not just the vine itself. Sometimes there'll be some roots on there. Just strip it off. Set it aside. Do another one here. And you know, these leaves come right off. If you got a pair of gloves, it works great. So I think you get the idea, but what you're gonna do is once you've actually stripped your English ivy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna coil it up. You'll find that when you make baskets, you do a lot of coiling of your material makes it easier to handle. So we're gonna coil it up as much as we think we need, and then we're gonna put it in a pot like this, and you boil it. So I have some already in here. You can see I'm just about ready to go inside and boil my vines. So I'll have flexible weavers. What boiling does is it makes them more pliable, more flexible. It also kills any bugs that might be in there, and um, it helps the bark come off. Some people like to strip the bark off their vines, um, and some people don't. Some people like it to be more rustic. But anyway, I boil this and it takes care of all the insects. Okay, so I think we're ready to go inside and boil. Okay, so now that all our materials are boiled, um, I pulled them out of this pot. I've got them here on the table ready to work with. So the first thing we're gonna do is create what I call the bones of the basket. That is, I'm gonna put together first the hoops. So these are the grapevines without any um, bark on them. And what you do is you lash them together like this here. You scarf them and then you lash them together. So now mine is ready to work with. Okay, and what you do is you just line it up until it looks nice to you, like that looks pretty nice to me. This is gonna be my handle. This is gonna be the rim of the basket here. So now what I need to do is I need to actually lash these things together. And I clamp them first just to hold one side together while I work on lashing the other side, okay? So I'm gonna use this, which is a thin, thin strip of reed for my lashing. And the lashing is what holds the rim and the handle secure. So um, basically we're creating what we call ears and we're gonna create a God's eye it's called. It's also called a four point lashing. So this is, we're gonna do one on each side. So. Okay, so work on the God's eye is coming along. Um, basically it's the same pattern over and over again. So I come up to a diagonal. I wrap around my rim, I bring it up for a diagonal, I wrap it around my top hoop, and then I bring it back down in a diagonal, and I wrap it around this rim, and I bring it down like this. So we're gonna repeat this pattern over and over again until I feel like I've got enough of an ear here 
to stick my lips in. And I think this looks good enough. I'm going to stop right here. Okay, one finished ear. Okay, so now that uh, the ears are secure and they have lashed the uh, hoop in the rim, it's time to put in the ribs right here. Okay, a rib here. And this will be, I'll just call it rib number one. And then I've got an exact same size rib here. And I'll put my other rib on the other side of the bottom hoop and you just secure these ribs right into the ears that's what the ears are for it's pretty cool so I like to start with three ribs on each side so there's one on this side this will be my second one on this side and you just kind of stick them in there anywhere because you can adjust them a little bit later once you put your weavers in so now I'm going to put rib number two over here on this side I put rib number one, um, you know, I'm going to switch these out because I don't like them. I always put rib number one closest to the bottom part of my hoop. Then rib number two. And it's amazing these don't look like they're going to stay, but they sure will. All right, now I have two on this side, two on this side. I'm going to put my third one in. And you just sort of jam them in there, actually. There. And if you've done your ears properly, everything will be quite secure. So what we now have is actually the skeleton of a basket. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to weave and then it'll begin to look like a basket. So you take your weaver from one part of the rim, over, under, over, under, to the other part of your rim, and then you just continue your process around and around. So you're weaving over and under around your first ear. So you can see over, 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 under, over, under. All right, so now you can see that um, we've got this little bit of weaving here that surrounds the ears, and same thing on this side. So that's how you always start. You um, put some thin woven roots close to the ear, and this helps stabilize the um, actual frame itself. So you do one side and then you do the other side. So now we're ready to start with some bigger, um, vines here and this should go a little bit more quickly so as we work what we're going to do is again we're always going to work from the ears toward the center and we just keep this up until we're done so now that i have a thicker rib here or no, i'm sorry not a rib but a thicker vine i went over i went under i'm going to join this together 
And the way I join is I just twist two vines together. So here you go, I've just twined these together and I've done it on the inside which so it'll show less for somebody else. So now that it's twined together, it becomes more of a continuous piece. And I just keep going. Anyway, when we think of baskets today, we think of decorative things. We just uh, don't realize that baskets were as were an essential part of life um, in earlier times. Uh, before there were such things as metal containers, ceramic containers, or today plastic or paper bags, people used woven baskets for absolutely everything. Um, for collecting food uh, from the wild, for collecting food from their garden and carrying it. They were used for storage. In fact, some of the very earliest colonists that came to North America wrote that they saw that Native Americans here um, on the East Coast had baskets as large, large enough to store four or five bushels of corn. So baskets were storage as well as carrying things. Um, they also used them sometimes in place of shelves. You would see baskets hanging rather than having things displayed on shelves. Um, baskets were used as sieves um, and uh, sifters, I should say, really. And colonists brought over basket weaving skills with them when they came to uh, the Americas. They, in fact, had been doing wicker work for hundreds and hundreds of years. And in fact, they are the ones who brought that particular kind of willow tree here to the United States so that they could replicate their basket making from Europe. So these vines that I'm using aren't the only kinds of vines you can use. You can use honeysuckle, which is actually a great vine to use. Um, wisteria is a good one to use as well. Um, porcelain berry, another good vine to use for basket weaving if you're trying to make baskets out of natural materials. And then there are other materials as well What you can make um, what we call splint baskets out of. Maybe things we're a little more used to seeing. So you can use oak, you can use ash. They split the wood into splints, very thin splints, and then use that to make baskets as well. And in fact, archeological studies have found that basket weaving is one of the oldest crafts in existence. Okay, well I'm almost to the end of this particular weaver here, so in a minute I'm going to add another weaver. Okay, so you can see the basket starting to fill in now, and what I want to do is I'm going to add some bark at this point because it'll give some variety to the basket. And these are coils of bark actually that I found in our chicken coop here, and they had been harvested some time ago and stored in coils. So they make a really, really pretty addition. So I'm just going to go ahead. I started it inside here, joined it to one of my other um, vine weavers. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to continue my over and under pattern, over ribs, under ribs, um, as I head toward the center. The other thing I like about the bark is it makes progress go more quickly because it's actually wider than a vine. And I think it makes a really nice pattern as well. So there you go. And it's just a normal part of the um, pattern that on one side, uh, and one turn, I guess I should say, the inside of your bark will show. And then once you go over the rim and begin back, the other side will show. And that's perfectly okay. So I think you can tell that our basket is actually becoming much more sturdy at this point. It always seems a little fragile in the beginning when you don't have a lot of your weavers there yet. But here we go. There, now the bark side is actually showing. Ooh. 
And you always maintain the same pattern that you started with um, in that you work from the ears toward the center. So whether we're working with vine or whether we're working with bark, we do the same thing. Some people like to work with short strips of either vine or bark. Myself, even though it's more tangly, I prefer to work with wider strips. I mean longer strips, because then I don't have to join them as often. could actually add another rib in here. Um, I don't think I will today, but on, but on another occasion, that's probably something I would do. I've seen baskets made with as many as 20 ribs. <laughs> here, right now, I have 10 ribs, so I've seen baskets with double the number of ribs. As you can see, I'm just about done. I probably only need to put one more weaver, just put this last bark strip through. So I have woven in evenly from each ear toward the center. And finally, I am ready to do my last wrap. So I'm just gonna go around here and once again, follow the same pattern. And if I've done my um, weaving correctly, this final strip, should um, turn out with the right pattern. And as you can see, it does because the one on this side of it went under a rib. The one on this one side went under a rib. This one is gonna go over a rib. So yay, that's perfect. So once this last weaver is in place, what we'll do is we'll just trim up and we'll be done. I like the way this looks. The other nice thing about making a basket with natural materials is that your mistakes almost never show. <laughs> so, which is something I'm very happy about. There we go, this. And I'm gonna go around the rim for the last time, okay. And I'm just gonna do what we call a filler here. And that means I have a little bit of a gap right here, but only right there. So what we do is we just weave a tiny bit more until the gap is filled and then, and then we just sort of bury our strip on the inside. There you go. See, I don't really need to go all the way around, but I did need to fill that little gap right there. Okay, so there. My gap is filled, and now the only thing I have left to do is just secure some of these loose ends, and then I'm gonna trim off extra material. And I'll go around and I trim off some of these roots. Some people like to leave all the roots, I trim some. Okay, I'm gonna bury my last piece in here. And if you bury them correctly on the inside, they don't show. You always do your joining and your terminations on the inside because people generally don't see the inside of a basket or they don't look at it as closely as they do the outside of a basket. There we go. Okay, voila, we're done.
So a basket made completely from natural materials. If I wanted to make this a different shape basket, what I would have, what I could do um, to start a new basket, I could change the length of my ribs. So I went for a really traditional melon-shaped basket, but had I made my ribs longer here, I could have made a very fat basket. I could have made my bottom um, flat, again, by rearranging the size of my ribs. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.